The persistence of Nigeria's social political crisis since the beginning of post-independence in 1960 is as a result of poor leadership roles in governance accumulated into ethno-religious sentiments and agitations that have become major problems to nation building. Our guest, Thelma Ofosu Asamwa, is working hard to raise the next generation of leaders who will take the country from a developing country to one that is developed. To do this, she created Blooming Minds Change Champions Network, an early intervention youth development organization aimed at tackling the challenges young people face in their community by building and equipping them to become change agents, and she'll be telling us all about it. Well, good morning and welcome to The Morning Show, Thelma. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Great. Well, great work you're doing uh, with the um, your uh, project. Well, I want you to tell our audience what your project, Boomi Mind Change Network, is all about and really the motivation behind your work. Okay, like you said, we're an early intervention youth organization and our goal basically is to help raise young leaders in Africa because, like you said, it's the biggest challenge that we have in Africa is leadership. And for me, I thought to myself, if we're going to change anything at all, we're going to have to start with the young people. And because, uh, well, I live in the UK, I see how young people affect change over there. And I said to myself, what can I do, you know, to bring about change in my country? And this is why I set up that organization to work with young people. And basically, it's just getting them involved, helping them understand what leadership is, so they're able to recognize good leadership. They're also able to recognize people who have the qualities to be their leader. So when eventually they have the opportunity to vote, they're voting right. Absolutely. I mean, it's no secret to you, the United Nations, when they look at the Nigerian population, they say 43% yeah. of our population is younger than the age of 14. That's a whole lot That's right. of young people. And I know you early answer there, you talked about preparing them for leadership. Yeah. But I do sometimes have a problem with us focusing on leadership because not everybody is going to be a leader per se. So how do you think your work prepares everybody to enter society with their adulthood well equipped to succeed. Absolutely. So, yeah. Like you said, we're not all going to be leaders, but I think that everyone has a part to play in leadership. And that's why we're not, um, you know, using the approach that just focuses really on just teaching people about leadership. So we run a Young Writers Award. And so we use this project, which is basically focused on literacy and arts. We use this to kind of drive what we're trying to achieve. And so with this project that we run, which is called the Blooming Minds Young Writers Award, just one of the many projects that we run, but this is our biggest project. The Young Writers Award is aimed at, you know, helping children to be more creative, to be more expressive. And in doing so, we get them to submit essays that they write based on what they, what they, um, how would I put it now? Based on their, their, their experience mm. in their community. So it's all about them, you know, observing and taking note of what's happening around them and being able to create a story from what they see. So it could be, you know, maybe on their way to school, they see one of those people, hawkers with stuff on their head and something happens and they're able to create a story. The whole idea is for them to hone their analytic skills. And this, uh, the, this is a, a major quality that I think a lot of, well, I don't want to say a lot of our leaders, but a lot of, a lot of us lack, or the young people lack, they're not analytic in thinking. And with this project, they're able to kind of process when they see what's going on. And in doing so, I believe that it will drive some sort of research, you know, because obviously if you're looking, you know, within your community and seeing what's going on and being able to kind of put that down or journal that down, that creates some sense of awareness. And in doing so, they're also able to maybe prefer solutions or think about how they can bring about a solution to whatever problem it is they see in their community. So that's basically one of the ways that we're working. So I'm not, we're not, you know, using a vague approach where, you know, you're teaching children about leadership, you're talking about, oh, this are the qualities of a leader, this is what you need to do, but actually just building the skills towards leadership and also, you know, if they find themselves in that position where they become a leader one day, then they have all those qualities and those skills that will help them be better leaders. That's completely amazing. Now, I know that your uh, project, is, it is a creative writing competition that you run as well. Yes. And, you know, like you rightly said, you encourage the kids to do some sort of research. And you know that 
We have this low reading culture in Nigeria and I believe Africa at large at this point. Yeah. I'd like to know some of the exciting things you do to simulate the kids so that they can, you know, get yeah. into writing. And also, how do you raise funds for your project every year? And what can the government do to support you? Okay, so for the kids, what we do to kind of encourage them, we give out books, we give out free books, and this is just across different genres not a particular kind, but different genres. We give out free books. We run like creative writing workshop for kids. And we also give cash remuneration. And that's just to encourage kids, you know, because when these kids here, they're going to be winning some sort of cash. They're all excited about it. So it's not just the cash, but the fact that, you know, they see themselves, they come around and see other children doing great things. It kind of encourages them. So this is some of the things we do. We partner with a book club as well here in, in Nigeria and also in Ghana. We, we, the bookshop kind of, um, the reading club, sorry, I partner with the reading club. The reading club is called Kawi, and what we do is, um, you know, we review or read a particular book every week, and this is how we help the children to, you know, kind of read. And also, you talked about raising funds. Well, it's just well-meaning individuals and organizations that have been, you know, supporting us through the funding that we get from them. One of our biggest sponsors is Genesis, Genesis Energy and Star Life Assurance, and this are companies that have been with us year on year you know, help, helping us and making sure that we're able to reach and impact as many people as we can. And also, how can the government help? Basically, just kind of supporting us financially and also, more importantly, if we can have, like, hubs around the city or in town where kids can just, you know, we can have, like, creative writing workshops for kids and also easier accessibility to government schools and local schools because it's, it's a whole lot to be able to reach public schools in this country you know, to get them involved in this. So if we can get better accessibility to, to speak to government, to, to I mean, public schools, because I believe there are lots of kids there as well. I mean, we have a few of them, but would like to reach a bit more. Definitely. I mean, it, it is such a beautiful prospect that you're working on. And I, I truly do mean it. It, it. When I was in high school, English was my favorite subject. Creative writing was always where I scored highest stats. So even though I know uh, I... Can tell. Yeah, you can tell, right? <laughs> yeah. Even though I may be a little too old, just a little too old to enter into this competition, like just by a few years. Maybe you could. You see? Um, <laughs> you see? I wanted to talk to you. The writing competition itself has been going on for five years. Oji, please. It's been going on for five years. And if you look across that five-year period, yeah. what has been your most memorable entry from a, from a youth applicant? All right, there was one girl in Ghana, actually. She wrote about the, the bleaching culture in Africa. And that really struck me. And this is just because she watched a documentary on BBC and she kind of started to notice women around her community on her way to school, you know, on her way to church or wherever it was. And she put up a fantastic essay about the skin bleaching culture and how, you know, and I looked, this was just a 14 year old girl. And she talked about the impact that it was having on people. And imagine if young people start to see, I mean, I'm not here to condemn anybody. Everyone has, you know, ha has, um, you know, whatever they want to do to themselves. But this is just one of the things that we saw. And I thought that that was really good. All right. So we, we, know, we know that you have an event today yes. um, for this uh, project as well. Yes. But yes. I also know you have other projects. But first, yes. tell me your expectations for this event. What are you looking forward to the most? OK, first, I'm looking forward to seeing the joy and the faces of those children who are going to be going home with their cash prizes today. And we also have a kids' fashion show, which is like a side, um, uh, we're featuring a kids' fashion show today. And I'm looking forward to that, to seeing all the kids in their colorful Ankara dresses and Ankara clothes. It's all about promoting Africa, promoting African, and you know, helping children to understand that they're, they're, they're better when they accept who they are. Lovely, lovely. So, um but can I walk in the show? Or yeah. Also to <laughs> so Adefemi also wants to be a model on the show. I mean, <laughs> it's a space. Really. So wait, your models are from your agency, your talent agency, yes. correct? Yes. Uh, what yes. is it? The Blooming Blue Minds Mind. Talent kids, Agency. Yes. Right. It's a kids so, agency. So, so uh, do you have like an actual agency or do you just recruit them online? How do you get the models? What do well, you yes, I have, we have an agency. We don't have a physical office. We recruit them online, but then we run like, create, we run like workshops to help train children as well. So yes, we've got kids who are registered with the agency who do commercials and TV, billboard and all of that. 
So, and these are the kids who are going to be walking the wrong way. So we've been working really hard this past couple of days. And so we're going to be seeing what the kids have got to show today on the runway. And also the wonderful designers who made the clothes they're going to be wearing. Absolutely. You know, that looks like it's going to be a really fantastic yes, event. And I'm sure you're all looking forward to it. I wanted us to take a few steps back and look at the... The, in, the work you do in terms of helping children. Yeah. You know, here in Nigeria, sadly, there doesn't seem to be a strong culture in nurturing mental health, most especially when it comes to younger people and children. Is that something that guides your work when you look at the Blooming Minds Change Champions Network? Yes, absolutely. Because I think it's sort of, I wouldn't say a taboo, but sort of people don't think that young people will have issues with their mental health. And I think a lot of that comes with the fact that they get pressure from school sometimes. There's some kids who are not academically able to, you know, you know, do what, for, for whatever reason it is. Having said that, there was a little girl who wrote something about dyslexia, and that is a big thing. A lot of people don't know children can have dyslexia, and she wrote about that in one of her essays. So, yes, this is one of the things that guides what we do. So if, you, if you're not able to, you know, you know, be 100% when it comes to your academics, you can be 100% when it comes to, you know, pursuing your talent. And we also promote arts with young people. So it's just everything to do with young people, giving them that platform where they can be expressive, they can be themselves. They don't have to be fit in one box and, you know, you know, trying to get them to be engineers or lawyers or whatever. I mean, all of that is good, but we need to actually, actually really, really help our children flourish by just giving them the opportunity to fly. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Just for um, Adefemi, I'm quite curious to know how much money she will make. Oh, what kind Me of... Me asking my own invoice. I thought you were to If she were to go into... The, it's, it's, I'm just asking for Adefemi because, I, I mean, I feel like she will apply it, for the competition. Apply, I'll be there this afternoon. Well, the, the, the winning prize is 100,000 naira for the first, wow. and then the runner-up in the A category gets 80,000, and then we have a younger category that's, um, I think, 80,000 and 50,000. Yeah, That's so big. we give that, and we're giving out books and lots of school supplies as well. So there's a lot going out there. Fantastic, today. Thelma. Thank you yes. so much. You've been a pleasure. Thank and, you so you know, much for work, having me. Good, good job on what you've been doing so far. Congratulations. Yeah.